Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on plant adaptations to land. So once upon a time, life existed only in the oceans. In fact, there wasn't even any soil on dry land, only rocks, because soil is composed of decaying plant material, and there was no land plants, the only plants were in the ocean, so there was nothing to make soil. Sea plants were originally very primitive. They were similar to these microscopic photosynthetic organisms that we see in the ocean today. Of course, we don't have any examples of what was actually there at the beginning of time. But these plants did not need to store water. They were surrounded by it. They didn't need a vascular system. A vascular system is like our arteries and veins. They're tubes throughout an organism that deliver water and nutrition to different parts of the body. These original plants didn't need a vascular system. They were really small. They were really only two cells thick, so every single cell was exposed to the surrounding water so they could get water by osmosis. These plants didn't need roots. The function of roots in a land plant is to absorb water by osmosis so it can be transported to the rest of the plant. These plants were so small they didn't need roots. They also didn't need to be able to stand up or support themselves. The water pressure alone kept these plants in the correct form and position. The last thing sea plants had to do was the male gamete had to swim to the female gamete. So what happens when this primitive plant moves to land? Well, it's not good. It's going to die from dehydration. It's not going to be able to get any water. So what adaptations is it going to need? It's going to need a way to stay hydrated. It's going to need a way to grow upright. They need a way to support themselves on land. Land plants need roots to absorb water from the ground. Land plants need a vascular system. They need to deliver the water from the ground to the rest of the plant. And they also need a way to transport the sugars that are made by photosynthesis, photosynthesis in the leaves of the plant to the rest of the plant. The male gamete also has to be able to find the female gamete without swimming if it's living on land. So let's go through these things individually. First of all, land plants need a way to stay hydrated. So land plants have something called a cuticle. It's this waxy coating on the surface of the plant and it prevents dehydration. If you can see here on, this is a lettuce leaf that's had some water droplets put on it. You see how those water droplets ball up? You can try this at home in your own kitchen. The water droplets dry up like this because these land plants have a cuticle, this waxy coating. What problem could you foresee with a waterproof coating on all over the plant? Plants need to exchange gases. They need carbon dioxide to come in for photosynthesis as the carbon donor. They need oxygen to come out. Oxygen is a waste product of the light reactions of photosynthesis. So the solution plants have is they have something called a stomata. And if you look under a microscope at a leaf, can you see this structure here that almost looks like lips on a mouth? This is a stomata. And plants can regulate their opening and closing to allow carbon dioxide to come in and oxygen to come out without losing too much water so that they're able to have this cuticle. The bottom line here is that land plants need a cuticle to prevent water loss. And if they have a cuticle, they have to have a stomata to allow for gas exchange. So cuticle and stomata go together. A land plant can't have one without the other. Land plants also need to be able to grow upright. They need a way to support themselves. They need roots to absorb water from the ground. And they need a vascular system to deliver water from the ground to the rest of the plant. And sugars made by photosynthesis in the leaves to the rest of the plant. These three all kind of go together. So I'm going to talk about them as one. So here we have a picture of a large tree. These trees have roots. The function of the roots is to absorb water from the soil and to deliver it up to the leaves where water is the primary electron donor in the light reactions of photosynthesis. There is a vascular system that allows the transport of water through a plant, and that's called the xylem. The only job of the xylem is to move water from the roots all the way up to the leaves. There's a separate part of the vascular system in plants called the phloem. The phloem's job is to transport the sugars that are made by photosynthesis in the leaves to all the rest of the parts of the plant. 
If we look more closely at the structure of the xylem, that's the vascular tube that delivers water around the plant. It is actually surrounded by dead cells. It's not living material. And in the walls of the xylem is a molecule called lignin. It's this very linear, rigid molecule that allows these tubes to stand up very, very straight. The lignified xylem is what gives plants their structure and allows them to stay upright. If you look at the leaves of the plant, these veins that you see in the plant are actually bundles of xylem and phloem together. But the xylem in the trunk of the plant with this lignin in it is what allows plants to stand upright. So in order to stand upright, they need xylem with lignin, they need roots to transport the water that comes in through the roots and then goes up through the xylem. And then of course this vascular system, the second part is the phloem, which allows the sugars to transport around the plant. The last thing a land plant would need if it wants to live in a very dry area is the male plant gamete needs to be able to find the female plant gamete without swimming. That's a later adaptation that we'll talk about in a future video. So for right now, you should know the evolutionary adaptations needed for plants to live on land. You should know the role of a cuticle and stomata and that they go together. You should know what lignin is and what structure it's found in. You should know the vascular system and roots and what the important role is for them in land plants. So that's all for tonight.